Well, let's let's talk about your um, philandering ways <laughs> on YouTube. Okay, so um, you know I do other people's. Anyone asks me to do a podcast, I do it. Yeah, I spoke to some really cool people today. I spoke to. Uh, let's see. I, I spoke to. Uh, hang on, I will tell you. You want to? Know <laughs> you can't even remember who they are. <laughs> I can't. Chuck Shoot. I, I spoke to Chuck Shoot. Chuck Shoot. Okay. Hey, cool. We had a good time on this podcast. Cool. Yeah. And um, then um, I was talking to a girl from Australia. I've done a few Australian podcasts in a row. You know, they, they, they seem to be liking me in Australia. That's good. And this girl's been listening to me and you, Anna. She's a big Anna fan, too, <clears throat> for 10 years. Did you tell her Anna says good day? <laughs> yeah, but I didn't say it like that. You have that. to speak their language because they really they do it a whole different way. They, they can't there. understand it. Yeah, they can't yeah. understand us. Westerners. Anyway, um, so uh, I'm talking to uh, watch. I'm gonna I'm gonna say her name, Rena Aluwalia. Rena Aluwalia. Yeah, that's a Rena, cool name. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. And boy, was she cute. Oh, is she your new um, girlfriend? Oh yeah, yeah. I and, feel like it's okay if they're on a different continent. Yeah, that that's not cheating, right? No. See, I'm cheating on Serena with. Lois, now I'm yeah. taking Lois with yeah. Aluwalia. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Aluwalia, yeah. Huh? Okay, yeah. My new girlfriend. By the way, before we went on the air, you yeah. were playing a song and I couldn't read something because the song was playing because I can't focus if music is playing. That's all I can think about. And you can't listen to when someone's talking because then all you're thinking about is a song that needs to be played. Right. So you and I are not a productive pair, which is by, why this podcast way, goes off the rails. And by the way, we weren't, I wasn't playing Santana's winning. I was no. playing something else. Yeah, and, you were. Um, and by the way, you were waiting for me to log in and it was playing like already. as if it was the waiting room to hell. And it made me so happy. Okay. I want it to be playing when, when I get checked in at the gates. At yeah. the what is it? The sooty gates of hell? I don't know what the, what they're called. You know what? I'm not going to put it in the middle because Bill is very busy for the next couple of weeks. I will play that song. Promise you. Anna, oh, now you weekend. respect Bill's time. Because Bill is in the middle of a big movie and he, he wrote know. to me and said, hey, man, don't give me any more last minutes. I need everything up front. So I'm, I'm just I, I, unlike I anybody that. else associated with this organization. Bill has an actual job. Yeah. <laughs> unlike you pardon. and me and the rest of everybody else. Yeah. I beg um, your pardon. He says from his basement. <laughs> so, <laughs> Ma, I'm doing a show down here. Ma! Be quiet! Hey. I'm doing a show. <laughs> Serena, shut up! I'm doing a show. <laughs> when am I jerking off and playing Dungeons and Dragons? Hey, that's what I do. I know. <laughs> and I, so anyway, um, I spoke to Rena Aluwalia mm -hmm. for an hour and twenty minutes. Whoa! <laughs> About an hour. Yeah, hour that's and twenty. Great. And she goes, well, she goes, you have a heart out, right? You, you have, you told me at the beginning, you have Anna coming up. I said, yeah. She goes, when's that coming up? And I said, 10 minutes. And she goes, we haven't started the interview. Yet. No. <laughs> I thought we were doing it because you, when I do most people's interview, like when I do Mike Rowe or anybody, we just started what? talking and they just flipped the mics on. And right. I, she did. I heard it hit record and I had to hit record on my end. So I went, oh, we're, we're just rolling into it. You know, most people, they'll let me roll in. And I, I'm in the middle of a story. They'll just roll right. in. Right. And we were enjoying each other's company. Yeah. She, you know, I'm cheating. She's your both. girlfriend after yeah, all. Yeah, after all. And um, yeah, next thing I know, she's like, all right, you ready to start the interview? And I'm like, what have we been doing? <laughs> that is a really long pre-interview. Like, they don't do that long of a pre-interview when you do late night. But you know what? Here's the thing. And this is why I love this girl. But did she record it? So you're going to use that conversation? No, no, I told her. I said, you know what? We'll, let's do it again next week. Okay. Because she's hot. <laughs> she wasn't hot. You want to look at her? I would have said, listen, you're not hot. Uh, we got to move on. Use what you got. Put it up. I get okay. a lot of views. You're good. But no, she was a smoke show. So um, she's in. She's in. 
I mean, that's all it takes, ladies. Here's the deal. <clears throat> no pressure. <laughs> I, let me tell you why I like this girl. She said, you know what? I was so nervous about talking to you that now I'm not nervous. And next week I can do a great interview. <laughs> so I'm talking Isn't to it always funny when people are like, I'm nervous to talk to you. I know it's, it's weird. You're like it's weird to me. It's, it's very weird. It doesn't make any sense. It's like I'm in my basement. I'm a dude in my basement. He's in front of a rogue bench. <laughs> There's weightlifting equipment behind me. I mean, I'm one step away from. Nerds like me are not supposed to be in position where hot chicks are nervous to talk to me, right? right? That's I think we're saying the same thing. OK, just want to make okay. sure. we're going to agree to agree on that. I mean, I talk about Lois. Yeah, I mean, her husband must hate my gut. I got on the phone with her husband. We had a great conversation he's about awesome. Guns. Yeah, he's a nice guy. He's a cool dude. He's hot, right, Anna? From he's a super thing. cute. Absolutely. Yeah, he, you know who he looks like? To me? Who? <laughs> that actor. Um, Vigil. Oh, Lee, that one? Vigil. Vig Vigo Mortensen? No, 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 no. Um, Vig, yeah, Viga, Vic Vig Tabak. No. You don't look like Vic Tabak. Oh, kidding. All right, let's see. Victor. Um, is it something that begins with a V? No. Um, Why are you uh, say, saying something that begins with V? Um, that's his first name. His last name. Oh. All right, let me see. Anyway. I'm going to find this guy. You're going to find it because I don't know what you're talking about. Remember when I was trying to come up with Joe Rogan's name one time? I said, the guy with the beard. You go, he, the guy with the beard. He lives in the canyon. That's what you said to me. Okay. I'm trying to say Milo Ventimiglia. Oh, Mi Milo Ventimiglia. Yeah, okay. Now you get why I can Not Vigo Mortensen. Yeah. <laughs> you, you transpose <clears throat> the letters. Okay, you know who Milo is? Week. All right. Yeah. You tell me her husband doesn't look like Milo. He does. You're right. Okay. He's like blonder. He's like less Italian looking, but it looks like him. No, I, 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 no I, I talked to him on, on the Zoom one night. He's got dark hair. He does? Oh, yeah. He has like hair. lighter hair. Maybe he has gray hair. I don't know. He, I'm telling he's, you. He, he looks like he has blue eyes. Like he's lighter skin. Like he's not Italian. Yeah. Milo Lois, is write more. to us and tell us if Tom is Italian. You know what? Maybe let's he get is. Her. And I just let's get her on the phone. How about okay. that? OK. Oh, and oh, ask her oh. if she's winning. Yeah. Remember, and then we're going to get to the email. Hey, don't tell her I got a new girlfriend. Whatever. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna immediately tell her that you have a new girlfriend. Right, hang on. Let's see if I can find her number. Wait, her real name is Leona, right? Leona. Right, hang on. <laughs> she she doesn't live in the canyon, but she she might live in the canyon. She lives in the canyon out east, Pasadena, somewhere. Yeah, she's she's out there somewhere because I'm a little jealous. She takes pictures. When she she's does. out there running and she takes a lot like, oh. of hikes and stuff. All right, here we're gonna call her just out of the blue. <clears throat> Hello, uh, Leona. We're on the podcast. Can we bring you on? Oh. You're already on. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Are you, are you at work? Uh, no, I'm finishing up right now, but other than I'll be off in a couple minutes. Wait, are you on speaker? Because uh, take take us off speaker. It sounds better. Okay. So instead of doing work, do something useful. Okay. Okay. We, we have a question. Do something useful like waste your time with us. Okay. Great. Thanks. Um, what's your husband's name again? Tom. Tom. Is Tom Italian? No. No. Does anyone ever tell him he looks like Milo? What's his last name? Milo Ventimiglia. Oh my gosh, you expect me to repeat that name to him? <laughs> Milo Ventimiglia, he was from Heroes and This Is Us. Yeah, look him up. Rocky, he, he did the Rocky remake, right? I don't think so. He did. He did some kind of Rocky something. I'm Googling him. Uh, I know him from Gilmore Girls. <laughs> you really know Gilmore Girls. This oh, is something yeah. new I've learned. About. I feel like, you know how when you just know oh. everything about somebody and then they yeah. surprise you? Yeah, Tallulah and I watched it. Yeah. Oh, God, he does. He looks just he like does, that guy, right? right? 
<laughs> yeah, he does. Uh, I don't know that anybody's ever told him that. But with yeah, the because search, you, yeah, would have to, you would have to be a fan of like the WB in order to even know that. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I no, mean, there are some shots on here where he looks very similar. Yes. Yes. That, that, that's a real thing, right? It seems like it. <laughs> All right. Now, are you ready for the bad news? Oh, we have no. bad news. Yeah, we get really bad okay. news. Vin, <laughs> Vinny has a new girlfriend. He's yeah, just I'm, announced to the podcast yeah. verse. <gasps> yeah. Vinny. Yeah, I'm cheating on uh -huh. <laughs> Again? I mean, what? A lot. <laughs> Yeah, okay. she but I said she lives in Australia, so it doesn't really count, right? Yeah, she's on another continent. Oh, uh, well, at least there's that, you know, because that's quite a drive. Yeah, I could, I could hit that, <laughs> right? That, that's too far away. It's a long boat drive. <laughs> <laughs> so so who is she, Vinny? I, I can't. Uh, her name is uh, Rena Aluwalia. I think she's Indian. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah, she was interviewing me and I, I just felt that she's I was I'm submitting. <laughs> well, you know, I knew it was bound to happen sooner or later. You know, look, you, <laughs> listen, you keep up with those muddy buddy runs and everything. Yeah, you, you, you can work your way back into my good graces. Oh, well, I am good. Whew, okay, better yeah. sign up for our next one. Yeah. <laughs> Just because you're married to a smoke show doesn't mean that you can't work your way back in with me. Yeah. Uh, um, another question. Um, the song Winning by Carlos Santana, was that on the jukebox over at the uh, trailer park? Um, yes, I believe it was. See, Anna? I told you. I said it was. No, don't say see, Anna. Don't say that. <laughs> I'm the one who said it. <laughs> oh, wait, we got a whole new audience. Should we explain who Leona is to the audience, the, the new audience, Anna? Yeah. That's right. I think it's you're going to have to the group. this one. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Leona is the woman who came up with the NSNG hat, the hat that right. I'm wearing. If you guys designed are watching the video right now, I have the hat on and uh, she designed this. Um, but how did you come into our consciousness? How, how did we find you originally, Leona? You, you, you're just a fan of the show and you're in the Facebook group, right? Uh, yeah, but I found you by way of the uh, Adam and Dr. Drew podcast um, back in, I guess I would have been. 2015 September 2015 yeah around that time so that's the first time I heard you and so I just started kind of um investigating more and seeing um looking up NSNG before I was I was starting to kind of migrate into a paleo and clean eating kind of um mode anyway but then I heard you and you made way more sense than some of the other stuff um that I was hearing so there you go I discovered your regular podcast then and and found the Facebook group and joined in. And Haven't then, regretted a moment. And we had a consult at one point, right? We did because I was going to do my first Spartan race, yeah. and uh, I wanted to kind of see if there was a particular way I should prep for it. And um, and then I thanked you then too for for um, all your wealth of wisdom and free advice and everything. It's, it's made a huge difference in my life. Yeah, and well, uh, thank you. And uh, here's the thing. Um, um, you, you said Spartan race, I said muddy buddy. How, how are those things different? Can you explain the Spartan race and how they work for the audience? Um, I've never done a muddy buddy. From what I understand, the whole course is muddy, hence the name. <laughs> so similar in the sense of obstacles, but I'm not entirely sure what they uh, what the muddy buddy ones are. But the, uh, but the Spartan ones are different levels. There's a 5k, a 10k, um, and then 12k, I guess. And there's a, even even much longer ones like ultras as well. But each each size of race has a different amount of obstacles. So you do anything from like barbed wire fences, eight foot walls, 20 foot cargo net walls, rope climbs, um, um, what's called a slip wall, which is like about a 15 foot wall that's at a 45 degree angle and a rope. And, and <laughs> they, they planned the race very well. Like this last race down by San Diego, um, I actually had to do what's called the dunk wall, which is a huge mud pit. And you go under a, a bit of an inflated inflatable wall and you come out the other side. And then the next obstacle while you're still dripping wet, <laughs> 
<laughs> is the slip wall. So, Wait, dripping so wet? It's I, just... need to, I need to go pay attention. <laughs> yeah. All of a sudden, I woke up. All, all, all right. of a sudden, he's listening to what you're saying. Wait. My girlfriend was dripping wet. All right, so wait, I'm going to go back a bit. So uh -huh. 5k, 10k, 12k, which one did you do? You know, the, the, I, the first time? The very first time oh, I've all three of my races have been 5k's. Okay, so that of course, that's three miles. So is it just a big circle? And there's obstacles along the way? Or how does this work? Um, there, it's not just a big circle. Um, in uh, the two, uh, Two of my races are the terrain has been a real mix of kind of like rolling rocky um, hills and and bluffs and and so it's they map out a uh, about a three three point five mile all through the terrain up and down uh, and around I'm like I'm like winding my hand through the air talking to you yeah we can't see it you don't have to be Italian right now. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's a real different terrain. My um, one of my races was up in um, San Francisco at Oracle Stadium. So they, they do have stadium races, and that uh, requires stuff down on the field as well as doing tons and tons and tons of stairs. And then um, because you're going up through the stands and weaving around all the seats and everything, so they they add the length by um, having you do a lot of stairs as well. Got it. So. Um... This is great. Now, sometimes that you had mentioned to me after you did your second one, that mm -hmm. if you don't want to do an obstacle, you can do burpees. How does that work? Explain to the audience how that works. Um, with Spartan, if you miss an obstacle, if you, you know, you, um, if you miss it, your penalty is burpees. So in the stadium one, you only have to do 15 only. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> and and in the other one, like outdoor ones, like the other two, if you miss a if you miss um, an obstacle, like you you're get you're allowed one attempt. If you don't get the attempt, your penalty is burpees, and you have to do burpees before you can move on to the next obstacle. So um, and on uh, the other races, it's thirty. Okay, so uh, are you are you doing less burpees and more obstacles now, or how how's that? I'm I'm trying to get a a, a handle on your improvement, you've done three of them now, if I'm counting correctly. Yes. Um, I'm sad to say that I'm not getting um, a whole lot better. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, 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 you, but you work, you know, you're a working woman, right? You work all mm -hmm. day and you, you know, do you get proper time to train or I know you have a daughter and you have that no, stupid I don't husband get, of I... yours that looks like Milo. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I'm, I am not, I, okay. I'm very inconsistent with training and it just, because it tends to be the thing that um, if I have a lot to do that day, it gets knocked off the list first. So right. um, just, be, so um, I'm not as consistent as I should be. And then there's just some obstacles that change that. Uh, and then there's a spear throw. <laughs> Whoa, hang on. <laughs> yeah, that's back. awesome. What, what do you get to throw? You, what, do you have to hit a target? What are we doing? Yeah, well, I'm excited. You got to hit a target, and it's about I don't know, it's about thirty feet out or so. And um, um, I even bought a spear so I could practice. <laughs> Where do you buy a but, spear, Anna? I need a spear. You do. <laughs> you do. I'm not kidding. I need a spear. Where, where do you get a spear? I mean, is it, it, does it look like a javelin or? Can, uh, not entirely. No, this one's just, it's more like a six foot wooden rod, like, like it would be a shovel rod or something. And then you add, it has about a six or seven inch barb at the end. I'm sure you could probably make one. And I'm sure someone who's, uh, uh, kind of crafty could, uh, make their own. But, oh, I know um, how to make stuff. I, I can make one. Oh, look you at do. This. I hear you're making a kayak. Oh, <laughs> I, I am. If I can make a kayak, I can make a spear. I'm looking at him. Anna. <laughs> Oh, I'm getting a spear. Hang on. I, I didn't think this podcast was going to go in this direction. Uh, we, 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 listen, people are interested in this stuff. Spears? Yeah, spears online. Hang on. You know, and I have to say, I would like a spear. spear. <laughs> the spear obstacle is just a more of a mental one. For, well, no, it's it's it takes some skill to you got to be able to do the wind up properly and everything. And I still can't get it right. I get very close, but 
I'm always just off to the left a little bit or off to the right a little bit. And um, 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 yeah, so, and, and being a someone who enjoys um, and kind of a novice at archery, you know, all things target, yeah. <laughs> it's a little disappointing when I miss it. So. <laughs> but uh, you know, um, you and I have talked about archery before. As a matter of fact, I was outside yesterday. I, I, I pulled 100. Um, I, I just went out and did 100. And believe it or not, when you're out of archery shape, like mm -hmm. I, I was really good up to 60. Mm -hmm. You know, I was putting everything in the yellow, just a couple in the red, you get to 60. And then more and more reds up to 70. When you get to 80, you're looking at a couple of them landing in the blue. You know, just at different mm -hmm. levels. And you, folks in archery, uh, the, the bullseye is yellow and then red and then blue. And um, <clears throat> yeah, it's amazing how when you're out of archery shape, how, <laughs> you know, just any, you know, when you start, you'll start flinching and you just won't pull it back correct. But I noticed you sent me a picture of you doing archery once mm -hmm. and um, you're doing barebow, right? You're not using sights or anything. No, it's just regular. It's a takedown bow. My my personal bow is just a takedown bow recurve. Yeah, but you're not using. Um, yeah, I, I use takedowns also. Um, but you, um, I, I use takedown oh, recurve. But you're not yeah, the, using sights or anything. No, the the picture that I show you was was didn't have any any kind of sight. My whole my regular bow um, does have just the the sight one simple sight on it. Okay, you know, you know, what we did in college when I learned archery, you know how you could get like a straight pen with like, they would have like little red or white, you know, bulbs on the end. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? We would take a piece of, um, uh, uh, of, you know, any kind of tape, but usually duct tape, and you would just tape it and just let that pop out a bit. And we were mm -hmm. using that to sight in and as soon as you figure out where that is, right, then you can, mm -hmm. you can use that as a site. Um, mm -hmm. And then you, you, you know, sometimes if you want to hit the thing, the yellow, you would you would be all the way on the red to the right or the left, depending on where you put that site that day. Right. Um, mm -hmm. But bare bow is a whole different thing. That's when you're sighting with the arrow. Which is a whole do, do you even know what I'm talking about at this point? Yeah. Yeah. I do. I know what you're referencing. <laughs> I'm still new enough. I don't know all the lingo and everything because I don't get to do it as often as I like, but I do love it. It's very therapeutic. Yeah, for some reason. You, you have to like cut everything out and you just do that. And with bare bow, mm -hmm. you put all four fingers at the bottom or all the three fingers at underneath the arrow. Right? You, you're oh, not, really? Yeah, you, you're not splitting a finger on top. Or oh, no, no, I don't do that anyway. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that when you use sights, you can do that. Mm. Come on by one day. I'll show you how to shoot it. Okay. Just come I on over. You might be in Australia. <laughs> Teaching my new girlfriend how to, I don't know, use a boomerang or something. <laughs> come here, Rena. Let me show you how to use a boomerang. Oh, maybe I should. Yeah. We've lost Anna. I think we lost. Oh, no, I'm here. I, I, don't, I don't know what you guys are talking about. So hey, here, I'm going to let them work this out of their system and then we'll get to the other Anna, stuff. Y'all are good. Y'all are good. Anna, can, can I tell you something? Yeah. How much you want to bet by tomorrow? I'm going to have a boomerang and a, and a spear. And a spear <laughs> delivered from Amazon. <laughs> I'm, 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 I didn't know spears. I might have to go join that event. If you could figure right. out how to do competitive spear throwing from your ski skates, that would be something. That's right. I have ski skates. Yeah, <laughs> I do. I know you do. <laughs> yeah, I don't forget these things. I still have the visual of Vinny on the ski skates. Yeah, I got ski skates. They're they're right at the top of the stairs there. Yeah. Can you do? Can you do them in Virginia though? It's pretty hilly where you are. Yeah, I, there's you one place. Trouble. There's one place by the university where I can do it. Okay. But there's some, it's not Woodland couple, Hills. It's not flat like the valley. No, it's not. But I can't do like I used to have a five mile all the way around, you know, out in Woodland Hills, yeah. you know, over in Thousand Oaks. There was a road that went a mile that way, two miles that way. And I, right. and I had a big square and it was all bicycle. You know, they, they have the bicycle mm -hmm. lanes out there and it was pretty smooth asphalt. And man, I would do 15, 20 miles out there on those uh, ski skates. Yeah. You want to talk about time to take a little nappy poo, man? That yeah. would that would kick your. <laughs> Did you butt. get ski skate fatigue? 
Yeah, <laughs> I did. <laughs> Do you have Epstein Barr ski skate? Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't do it, man. I, I had um, adrenal Chronic ski skate fatigue. Yeah, I had adrenal ski skate fatigue. Yeah. But yeah, look, folks, it, I'm a guy for all the new people in the audience. I will try anything. This is true. You know, uh, Serena says I'm kind of like um, the guy, you know, like um, the guy from Family Guy, Peter. Yeah. You know, you'll see him in the front yard in a rocket ship. That's <laughs> no. Yeah, who knows what you I will say when I went to your house in Woodland Hills and you showed me. Well, first of all, I felt like you had a lot of man caves, like you had a lot of like nooks and crannies around the house. But now now you have an entire floor dedicated to it. But like he had this shed that was just a shed where he makes shotgun shells. Yeah. And then he has every piece of machinery that I'd never even heard of because I would bring my knives over for him to sharpen my knives. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. And then we would talk and record a podcast and I bring him bacon as payment. Yeah. And, and, uh, <laughs> it was literally, I was like, what? And then he showed me and luckily I'm actually interested in that stuff, but I was like, this is a level of a do it yourselfer that I've never seen. Yeah. yeah <laughs> and I'm going to keep that in mind that when the apocalypse comes, I'm going to have to take the Oregon trail back East, and get to your house. Look, I'm not one of those people that collects cans of food and keep them in a bunker. Yeah. But if you notice all around my office, I have um, Zippo cigarette lighters. I have them in my cars. Oh, you'll be ready. And I have them everywhere. And and people go, cigarette, you don't smoke. It's like, well, it's not a requirement to smoke. No, Zippos are very handy. Yeah, Zippos, like you could go, like if the apocalypse, you could go to any gas pump. Right. Because, you know, if you try to keep them, they, they're going to evaporate. The fuel is going to evaporate. So I don't try to keep them full. But if anything comes down, you could go to any gas pump and drip a couple of, you know, drips of gas into that Zippo. It will light. You got a fire. You got yourself fire right there. Um, I'm sorry, but if you <clears throat> need to keep things in your pantry for the apocalypse, you're going to keep NSNG foods, ultra fats, and you're going to yeah. keep Eat Happy Kitchen sauces because those things will keep for forever. Because most people take the ultra fat and they squeeze it out and then they put Anna sauce on top. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, it's, apocalypse. A, it's, the, it's the apocalypse <laughs> cocktail, folks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see you do that over there, Kurt Lapeer. Yeah. Oh, Kurt Lapeer will do it. <laughs> yeah, he'll do it. He'll, do it. he'll, he'll make it nasty, though. I Apparently, I called him a dirty bastard on a, on a recent episode. I don't even remember saying that. So, wait, wait, Anna, what's that guy, Tommy, that does all your recipes down in Alabama? Tommy okay. Walker. All right, here, Tommy, I want you to do a dish where all you use is Anna's stuff. You uh-huh. can use her rubs, you can use her, her sauce and NSNG foods, ultra fat. I want you to put something together. I already have an idea. I'm about to throw up, but go on. No, here's what you do. You take a chicken. <laughs> oh, <God>. Okay. <laughs> a whole chicken. All right, a whole chicken. This is going to use all the products, okay? And you, you, you rub it with Villa Capelli olive oil. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But you have to you have to take the ultra fat and you have to rub it in your hand so it gets um, warm enough. Right. You don't want a cold ultra fat because yeah. you need to melt the uh, coconut oil. Yeah. And but and you warm it in your hands. And while you're warming it in your hands, you, your friend is going to sprinkle the barbecue dust over the chicken. Right. Because it's got the Villa Capelli on there already. It'll stick. Yes. So it'll stick to it. Then you take that ultra fat and the one with the coffee, because we know that coffee and barbecue. I was going to say, can we use my coffee, too? Oh, we could Just definitely get, we could sprinkle uh-huh. extra coffee on there, okay, but it's going to be a barbecue on. peanut chicken, except for it's almond. But you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I think I just invented it. Almond chicken. All right, Anna, Anna. Barbecue Anna. almond chicken. I want to see who comes up with it first. You or Tommy Walker. Let's let Tommy Walker do. It. I don't have time. All right, Tommy, you need, <laughs> I to, need use... to go over to Tommy's for dinner because apparently he makes dinner every night and it's amazing. All right, hey, Tommy, you need to use any old chicken. Uh, you need to use one of Anna's sauces we don't care yeah. which one. Oh, the sauce i didn't even think about that but that would be a good acid in there you need to you need to use ultra fat we don't care which one that's and right you need to use my coffee and villa capelli olive oil go i you bet know you, you could do something do? You and you're allowed take... to use salt right i mean you can use salt. oh yeah you can use salt in fact i would do that add the pink crema to it and here's why and then sprinkle a little extra cinnamon on it and here's what you have almost like a, a moroccan chicken because you got the almond Right. You got the cinnamon, you got the barbecue dust, the paprika, you got the um, 
what's it called? The Villa Capelli's on there. The coffee's on there. It's a very like almost Middle Eastern, almost African spiced chicken. Fiona, do, do you it. have all of those products? Can you try something? I, nobody has I the spices do. yet because I'm still waiting to mail them because <laughs> I'm waiting to receive them from the people. <laughs> so, but yeah, you I will have them. I don't have a spice. I, yeah, I, um, pre no, I don't have prices. I have the sauces. I have the three different types of sauces and I have a cabinet full of ultra fat. So Anna, I, I think, um, we, uh, you know, we've put it out there. Maybe Kurt, maybe Tommy, maybe Lois, you never know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, Lois, I don't want to put you on the spot, but how are we doing? Remember that job we talked about? Um, oh, yeah, work yeah. How's that going? <laughs> I was actually going to contact you. Um, um, my past three days have been um, kind of long work days, so I haven't had a chance to, to um, chat with you, obviously. But um, yeah, can we talk later? Oh, boy. Is this good news? Oh, bad? boy. <laughs> you brought, it up, you brought later. it up on the air. Oh, God. Oh, well, no. It's, it, I feel like it's good news, but um, <laughs> I, did, I just figured like the world didn't want to hear about it right now. They already heard my, me running, you know. Let, let me ask you this. <laughs> Can I just ask a simple question? Uh huh. Is my search continuing or ending? Ending. Okay. Thank God. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, you did a great job on on that first one that you tried. Um, oh, good. Yeah, I, I was impressed. Did, did oh, Debbie good. was Debbie happy? Because it doesn't matter if I'm happy. <laughs> she seemed happy. Yeah. Wait, wait, hang on. Debbie, hold Debbie on, hold on, happy? stop. Hang on, I'm about to get to Ben. I, literally, I went, wait, what? <laughs> you got that comment, got me to check, look up from my phone. <laughs> <laughs> Debbie was, was what? Again? <laughs> she seemed what? Say that again. She seems, no, I didn't say, I didn't say she seemed sick. I said she had a couple suggestions, didn't I? Isn't that what I but, said? No, so you I, said I Debbie you. seemed happy. <laughs> oh. And we were just making sure that that's what you meant. Are you sure you were talking to Debbie? <laughs> <laughs> Debbie, by the way, Debbie's going to kill both of us. <laughs> when, De <laughs> when Debbie's in a good mood, I'm still scared. <laughs> I'm, even, I'm even more scared. <laughs> this woman works for me and I'm scared. <laughs> she... <laughs> to be fair, Debbie does everything. So I'm she has a right to yell at everybody. I'm scared of Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> when someone else complains about Debbie, I just fire them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a pecking order. It yeah, goes, it goes, Debbie. God. Baby Andy. <laughs> then Vinny. Then everybody else. No, Anna, it, you, look, I, Anna knows this to be a fact. Whenever someone complains about Debbie, I just fire them. <laughs> That's true. That's actually happened. <laughs> it's like, I'm scared. I can't fire her. <laughs> you would never fire her. Oh, I, I, I tell everybody when and, you complain about And not about just Debbie. because you're absolutely petrified of her, but no, because no. she does a good job. No, she does. Without Debbie, this would not exist. So this it's a whole thing would just it was the house of cards. And Debbie yeah. is the is the the queen of everything. Yeah, whenever whenever I'm confused, I just go Debbie, they just call Debbie, call Debbie and she has it figured out. And I don't know how or why, but she's like a Marine. She you know, she nothing. She's unflappable. She just handles it. Yeah, she's a badass. Yeah. So there you have it. So, uh, Leona, <clears throat> I guess I'm saying welcome aboard. I guess I got to call you Leona now because. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've kind of, I've kind of to learn to go with the flow with all the other three names you call me. Yeah, but if I call you three <laughs> different names, I might end up paying you three different times for the same job. Like, like I said, all the other three uh, <laughs> names you call me. <laughs> yeah. Lois, what else do we call you? Lana. Let me see. On Twitter, yeah, Lana. Uh, Lana. Lola, I Lola, think. Was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but Gina, Lola, Bridget. I mean, that's, come on. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's right. I'll okay, Miss Leona. Um, we're going to let you go because. Um, okay. <clears throat> but thank you. And thank you for explaining um, how the, and folks, if you guys want to do this, they do Spartan races all over the country, I think. It's not just they California. They really do. All over the world. All over the yeah. world. 
the guy that started that is a pretty interesting dude. I've always wanted to have him on the podcast. Um, but never for whatever reason, I've never gotten the guy on. Um, so maybe so. Yeah, it's a very interesting thing. And it keeps people trying and staying in shape and doing things that would bring you out of your comfort zone. I mean, you're climbing slippery walls, you're getting wet, you're throwing spears, what could go wrong? <laughs> That's very true, though. It's one of the reasons I, I do it. I mean, um, shape wise, you know, what I like about the community for Spartan, too, is um, when you go to a race, you will see people of all different levels of abilities and shapes and sizes, and they all really encourage each other through it. And um, it's it's just a great, you know, slightly competitive, you know, I mean, there's different levels of competition, but it's really, um, it's good. It's challenging for me. It's, it's more the mental challenges of things like the tall walls and everything. And, and um, the other way, now um, I got, I got I more agree. questions. I got, I got a couple more questions. <laughs> so is it like CrossFit? Like when you show up, you don't know what the course is going to be or what the challenges are going to be, or do you know ahead of time? Um, you know, ahead of time. Okay. Uh, well, you can, you can know ahead of time. Like if you look it up and everything, they have a, they, send a map and everything like that, um, that you can kind of get a, a rough idea. And um, I think that some of them, though, kind of base, um, they vary on the terrain that they're held at as well as to what, what ones they include, from what okay. I understand. So. Yeah, so yeah, because with CrossFit, you know, you, you got to be prepared for anything. And you're like, I'm talking about for the, uh, the pros. Uh -huh. the, one, the ones that I'm going to do air quotes that don't take any PEDs, those guys, mm -hmm. yeah, because mm -hmm. women just naturally look like that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, those guys. But yeah, they don't know what they're going to do ahead of time. They, they just tell them when they get there. And my next question is, um, at the upper levels, the douchebag level, do, do they bring their own spears and stuff? Do they show up with their own equipment? I don't think so. No, I think it's still all there. And that's, you know, in my defense, that could be why, well, not that I'm at the elite level, but um, my spear was warped a little bit. So, you know, <laughs> oh, that's, <laughs> that's not fair. an extra twist on it. <laughs> I know. Well, you know, if you but, work really hard for us, I will get you a spear. I already have a spear. Oh, you do? Yeah. I have, yeah. I'm still getting Remember a spear that? tonight. <laughs> I'm getting a spear tonight. <laughs> It's fun, though. Um, and yes, I encourage anyone uh, to do it. I'll I'll send you a couple of photos. Um, they have photographers at place different points throughout the race, like about six different obstacles. And I got lucky because this time they replaced it all the ones that uh, they're the easier obstacles for mm -hmm. me. So so I'm smiling at all the pictures. <laughs> but there's plenty of other ones that had the photographer been on the 20 foot cargo wall that I had to like, you know, and at the top of it, it would be, you know, stone cold fear. <laughs> yeah, because do, do you go down the other side or do you do you shimmy down the other side or you just throw yourself off? Oh, no, I I, I take it slow. I take it slow. You know, I just um, I like the the, one, the slip wall. One side is solid metal, but the other side is um, just rungs, metal round metal rungs. And of course, when you've got hundreds of people. <laughs> going over them and they're all muddy and slippery it's uh you know it's, yeah. I, it's not worth it to me to rush it i'd rather be slow and have a bad time and then survive <laughs> oh, I, I would be breaking <laughs> legs me. because i would just jump off the top just to save time I'm, I'm, <laughs> I, that's why i can't do those things i'm just super competitive and i'd hurt myself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right leona we're, we're gonna let you go um thank you for coming on and uh we're gonna play a special song for you at the end of the show so if you listen on monday listen till okay. the end yeah, yeah. that's right all right there okay. she goes folks lois <laughs> <clears throat> thank you bye sweetie thanks, thanks for coming on bye all right there she goes anna there she goes and uh uh so we had this woman write to us right yep Right. She wrote to me right. and, you know, I, I try to write people <clears throat> back as much as possible, but this email had so many great questions. I thought it would be better purposed for Monday show content. Okay. Um, so so would you like um, me to read the whole thing through first and then we kind of go through it. All right. Read the whole thing. 
and then we'll break for an ad and then we'll go through it. Okay, great. That? Hello, Anna. Am I a crazy person? I like that she starts it right there. Um, I heard the Mike Rowe podcast with Vinny on it and I knew I had to do this. Problem is, I heard it on one of my back and forth trips to the hospital 40 minutes away that held my husband after cardiac arrest and then triple bypass. Surgery was two weeks ago now and he's doing great, praise God. He's been home and recovering real well. I've been diagnosed with severe hormone imbalance and it has been impossible to lose weight no matter what I've done. But I'm pretty balanced now and I'm believe and am believing this will be the answer. So I started NSNG seven days ago. Is this good to do now? Should I wait until life calms down? Should I push through? Should I have lost any weight yet? I've made it this far, so I I've made it this far, so think I should keep it up. I appreciate a woman's opinion whenever you have the time. Thanks again for all the great things as I start this journey. Thank you for all your free recipes and great ideas. I really appreciate it. Appreciatively. And then she says her name. Okay. Uh, did, uh, before we go to break. Yes. Does she say anything about her age? Height, we don't know her age, her height, her weight, her starting weight, her goals. So we don't know if she wants to lose 10 pounds or if she's right. got. We don't. So it's going to be a little bit of a more general question. And I would tell her, I'm going to write her after this and say, hey, we're talked about your email in in the upcoming yeah. monday show uh i i would recommend to her anyway when i write people back make sure you book a consult with Vinny. right so i always say that to people but you know that's um, one of the few things i charge for and some people can't afford it and that makes me feel bad so all right well i don't know all right so we'll i don't find. know her situation but i always i'm just telling you that i always recommend that to people because i know that if they can afford it the one-on-one -on -one time is really great because you can really dial it in with people so you won't be able to dial it in from that perspective however all of her questions made me realize these are very typical questions and they're asked in the groups constantly. So let's just talk about it after we do an ad. Uh, Villa Capelli olive oil, folks. Um, as long as I'm running, a fan. Yeah, I'm, I'm a fan too. Folks, you're going to need Villa Capelli if you're going to take the challenge of trying to use all of Anna's products along with NSNG Foods products and Villa Capelli. If you want to do something, and by the way, we said chicken, but if you want to try your hand at pork, venison beef if you could come up with something and it tastes good we you will win uh, something a hat anna will send you some stuff yeah and i will too yeah <clears throat> so at any rate villa capelli is part of that you're going to need the villa capelli olive oil it's the best olive oil on the planet and i'm not saying that because they pay me a crap load of money uh, we were saying that before they paid us a crap load of money. That's true. We were basically working for free because we love them so much. Yeah, we, we just were talking about it. And Paul Capelli, God rest his soul, um, he would, he started going, why is my stuff selling out in the United States? I'm in Italy. Yeah. And, everything, and he started looking into it and went, oh, it's that Anna Vecino chick that was over here two years ago. And we were talking about it on the podcast because Anna and I would do three podcasts in a row. That's right. My voice would go hoarse the way it's going hoarse now because this is podcast number four that I'm doing in a row here today. <clears throat> and um, I would just drink olive oil in between the shows. And people say, he, is he really drinking? Yeah, I was drinking yeah. the capelli. We would slurp it, the stripaccio. Because <laughs> you, so, you aerate yeah. it. If you do the stripaccio, you're going to aerate the yeah. olive oil in your mouth. Exactly. Good. It brings and the flavors out. It like, really you know, does. Wine. And then I would go always go <clears throat> because I would get real olive oil has that peppery pinch mm -hmm. that you might not feel from the olive oil you're drinking here in the United States because it's right. cut up to 40%. Villa Capelli is the real stuff. 100% pure olive oil is delicious. And it almost becomes a salad dressing by itself. You just yeah. put that on salad or anything else. You add a little salt, bada bing, bada boom. You're done. By the way, I've done that many times when I just feel lazy. I drizzle Villa Capelli and salt on the salad and that's done. As a matter of fact, folks, um, I used to take out into my kayak when I went sea kayaking. I had one and two ounce vials where I would put Villa Capelli with one of my ultra salts in there. I would break it off in the little tiny vial. And yeah. while I was out there, I would just drink it down. It tasted like a salad caprese. It was just del so good. delicious. By the and way, the micro effect has now affected Villa Capelli because the 750 milliliter bottles are sold out. So oh. I got to be honest with you guys. What we always tell people anyways, to just go for the three liter tin. It's so good. And if yeah. you get the three liter tin and some of their spices, which again, they grow the spices and the herbs 
on um, the property. So like the, the, the salt, the herb salt, the lemon salt, all that stuff, the bay, the bay leaf powder, the rosemary powder, things like that. They're so fresh. You've never smelled garlic powder like that before. Um, and order a little more so that when you use the discount code Vinny, V-I-N-N-I-E, and you get 10% off your order, you still qualify for the $100 free shipping. Yeah. So after the discount, after the 10%, by putting in promo code Vinny, V-I-N-N-I-E, no wimpy Y, V-I-N-N-I-E, 10% off. Yeah. If you spend over $100 after that discount, you get uh, free shipping and blah, 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 blah. True. Villa Capelli olive oil, best olive oil on the planet, bar none. Take it from two wops. Uh, Anna. There you go. Um, <clears throat> okay. So, go on. So she's Ask me the so question. This, this woman here has a lot going on. Her husband, thank goodness he's doing all right. Yeah. Um, I, w I would love to know the backstory of him, but we don't have that information. But let's focus We don't know what her. happened. Yeah, let's yeah. focus on her. But we talk a lot about heart health on this podcast. So if you're listening to this podcast, go back and listen to earlier. We talk about it a lot. It comes up a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so from the female perspective, she, you know, she says she has a severe hormone imbalance and now she's, she feels like she's pretty balanced. And so she asked for a woman's opinion, but you're going to get both of our opinions. Cause here we are on the Monday show and this is Vinny's show. So uh, I say, start doing NSNG as soon as you possibly can. If you're already doing it, continue to do it because going off and on can be crazy making to your hormones and you don't want to make your hormones any more flared up and crazy than you already have. So my experience has been, I, up until starting to do NSNG, I experienced those horrible PMS symptoms. I basically had five good days on a cycle. And then like the boob pain would start the underground hormonal zits would start. And I'm talking well into like my thirties, this would happen. Right. And where it shouldn't be happening. And then you know, just having a, and then the cycle started getting shorter and things started getting weirder, which is what happens between the ages of 35 and 50 for a woman, things get weird. <clears throat> and, um, it's very frustrating. And I'm not going to say that NSNG has like been some big cure all, but what has happened for me is that, and by the way, I've had the boob pain before the period ever since I had a period. And the doctor right. told me when I was 18, I've talked about this on the podcast, the doctor told me, you need to stop drinking caffeine. It's the caffeine that's causing your boob pain. And so for years, I went around feeling guilty if I had coffee because I thought that I was causing my own pain, right? And right. now know that that's complete and utter horse hockey. So when I went NSNG and got strict with it years ago, I noticed that I wasn't getting that premenstrual boob pain, which is for me amazing. Like, thank goodness. And then I um, then realized when I really dial it in and this, this started several years ago, I don't even get cramps anymore. So if I have a cycle, when I have a cycle, I still don't have a cycle. When I have a cycle, I don't get cramps at, at all anymore, which is again, another friggin' miracle because I was the person who was taking almost an entire bottle of Advil over the first two to three days of my period, which is really bad for you to take all the, what are they called? N S A I D S or something. Yeah. And, and something like that. Anyway, they're terrible for you. And probably non -steroidal now non -steroidal anti inflammatories, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories are probably now responsible for the second autoimmune issue that I have with the leukocytic colitis. It's one of the factors that the it, people who have that autoimmune have abused Advil in their earlier days. So for me, it, there's absolutely no going back. Like it, it has regulated the hormones in such a way. That being said, I'm still a, I'm a month away from turning 49. I'm sure that perimenopause is flaring up. I'm sure menopause is imminent. Like I get that, but I feel much more better prepared. Now, I also want to address, I know that you're going to talk about insulin resistance and all this stuff, but I just want to give the female perspective. And again, I don't know how old this woman is. Maybe she's postmenopausal. Maybe she's pre, I have no idea. But the, the balancing of the hormones, we've had people who could not get pregnant, get pregnant. We've had people, the, the skin clears up. That's a hormonal thing. We've had people, uh, all kinds of, of victories, non-scale victories that have happened right. from going in SNG from the balancing of the hormones and sleeping better. And then for me, again, this is just me. And I know there are some people who are in the Facebook groups who've experienced this as well. And if you ever need to look it up, you can, because people are very open and honest about this. 
Um, I was never on medication for anxiety and depression, although I, I, it was recommended for me. I just chose not to take them. And um, since going NSNG, my brain chemistry has completely, I, I don't want to say like neutralized. It's just, I don't go to the dark places anymore. And that, and again, that's my little N equals one experiment, but that is one reason behind why I named the books eat happy. And it seems like a silly name, but it actually well, is because eat in, sad just didn't eat roll sad. The I don't, uh, the metrics weren't great on that. Yeah. But um, no, but, but seriously, and, and I also grew up with a mother who was extreme, you know, but the bad bipolar, she really, really struggled with mental health issues and was a sugar addict. And so, and being at her side and watching her have systemic organ failure when, when she should have had a routine heart valve replacement, she couldn't, she didn't have the strength to fight it. She didn't have the emotional strength when she was, you know what I mean? It was, it was she had a really hard time and she was a right. deep, deep sugar addict. So that's for me where I'm coming from. That's just one person's perspective. If you go in the group, you'll hear a lot of women talk about this stuff and a lot of people about if so, if there's any brain chemistry issues, which again, hormonal, but I know, I know that you want to talk about insulin and stuff like that, but I just want to throw that out there first. No, you know, I talk about the insulin and all the, you know, the hormones and the whole thing, but I, I'm going to talk a little differently tonight. Um, <clears throat> one of my phone calls today was from a woman and her husband, uh, she, she's called me now three times, maybe four. Um, and the first time it was just her. And we spoke and we, you know, very nice woman, Midwest and a whole thing, school teacher. And she's not incredibly overweight, you know, <clears throat> stuck at around 185 or so, 190. And um, tall enough to where, you know, if she weighed 145 or so, she'd be, you know, right in there. So um, she was like, you know, I'm doing an SNG, I'm trying this and the whole thing. And I, I worked with her, we talked about hormones, we talked about everything, we talked about how to do it right. And, you know, again, you know, she's of an age where, you know, diet mentality, and what have you. And usually when I see another phone call coming in from the same person a couple of weeks later, I'm going, Oh, no, you know, either there's some success, and they want to get to the next level or something ain't working. Right. And this woman told me she had been in the group for a bit and all this stuff and, and it wasn't working. Mm -hmm. So I already knew that. Second time I spoke to her, it's her and it's her husband's on the phone too. And uh, they're big fans. And it's like, look, we know this works. We know uh, we feel better and all that. She's not losing weight. And during the second phone call, she starts talking about thyroid issues. And I, you know, as I tell everyone, I'm not a doctor. But, um, you know, thyroid, you know, that can that can hinder weight loss, you know, if you have hyper versus hypo. And I said, but look, this is not medical advice. Um, maybe you need to see a doctor, you know, I just kind of threw it out there. And I'm paraphrasing at this point, because I'm sure she's going to hear this and go, wait, that's my story, honey, he's telling my story. And she goes, Yeah, I'm on Synthroid. And I went, Okay. Yeah. How, how long have you been on that? She goes, seven or eight years. Yep. Okay. Have they upped the dose, down the dose? Nope. Now I just keep getting it refilled. And, you know, and she said to me as if it was a matter of fact, she goes, you know what they say, once you're on Synthroid, you're on for the rest of your life. Right. And I'm like, well, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> you know, I'm not a doctor. I'm, I'm, I'm not telling you to go off. I'm not telling you to titrate off. I'm not telling you anything, but what I am telling you is go get another opinion. You, you, a doctor gave you something for an issue seven years ago, and you've just been refilling this and taking this for seven, year, eight years. She Does goes, the doctor not retest thyroid levels? According to her, no. Just that's crazy. Just you're taking the medicine. Hey, at least we, once a year. We just refilling it. Just refill, refill. Re, you know. Wow. And I was like, well, that doesn't seem right to me. No. And she no, goes, no. and I think, and I could be paraphrasing this part. Of I changed a different doctor at one point and she just checked it off and I just kept refilling it. And no, so yeah. no checks. And I said, would you consider getting checked? Because doctors say things and people take it as once you're on Synthroid, you're going to be on Synthroid for the rest of your life. Right. 
Oh, okay. When was that decree handed down from the fucking mountaintop? Because I'm not really sure. Right? That's crazy to me because the th especially the thyroid is such a little nuanced, yeah, little butterfly of a literal butterfly. To, you know, that, the reason I'm not mentioning this woman's name and she's you know during this time you know those changes going on in the body. She's of a certain age and and on and on and on. And I'm like, oh, yeah. I said, just go get. get so she goes to this guy to a, a, a different doctor who she's got to pay because it's not in network, but she trusts this doctor. And, you know, the doctor says, Oh, they put you on this because of a nodule. You could come off of this. You could come off. Yeah, you could just come right off. It, you don't even have to titrate, just come off. You don't have to really? Yeah, you just come off. And then they just took I, I it would right venture off. to say that that's also kind of shitty that they just automatically put her on Synthroid because they found a nodule. Was the nodule growing? Did they rescan the nodule? And then they don't tell you any of that, that you're allowed to ask those kinds of questions. I actually have an answer to that. She had it rescanned. The nodule hasn't changed. In seven and why is she on Synthroid? I don't know. Okay. And she was calling me to thank me. Yeah, the woman, great. You know, she was like, I want to thank you. I was like, what did I do? Today, <laughs> there's a phone call today. She goes, because, because you're, like you're not yelling I, at me. I wouldn't have ever. I wouldn't have ever. She goes, I wouldn't. I, I would have just stayed on this drug. I didn't have to be on this drug. Just taking a drug willy nilly. Right. Willy -nilly, just because people say smart woman, husband, smart man. But when people doctors hand down, it's almost like someone handed down the Ten Commandments. Here, the, here are the tablets. This shall be right. And then no right. one questions. Right. And. She goes, by the way, um, I've been off of it for two weeks. I feel better. And um, I've lost two pounds. <laughs> okay. All right. Great. You know, so when people say, should I do this? Should I not do this? I'm not asking anyone to change their diet. I'm talking now, now I'm back on this woman, your woman. Right. I'm not asking anyone to just go and jump off of some cliff. NSNG is not some crazy wackadoo diet where you're drinking two shakes a day and having a sensible yeah. meal at night. You're not counting calories to where you eat nothing all day and then you use all your, your counting calories to eat a brownie at night. This is not some blue zone diet or some, you know, a, a, a Mediterranean bullshit or whatever. All I'm saying is you want to do better, cut out sugars, cut out grains, cut out seed oils. If it's a one ingredient food, eat it. Meat is one ingredient, fish, one ingredient, chicken, one ingredient, nuts, one ingredient, vegetables, one ingredient, fruit, one ingredient. That's it. That's yeah, it. it's not That's a thing where you do it to do. It's not like you do a thing for six weeks. And then when you come out the other side, if you if you adhere really correctly, in six weeks, you'll be a totally new, new person, which is what diet mentality wants to sell you on, because that's how they get you to buy the $350 plan with the potions and the powders and the things and the mixtures and the chemical shit storms. So whatever this woman's name is, and don't hand it out because we didn't get permission. I'm not saying it. I'm not saying it. Honey, if you're listening, and that's why I said honey. For all you millennials who don't eat family. honey, call each other honey. Yeah. Listen, sweetie. Honey. Can I say this thing? Tootsie sure. Pop. You call me pumpkin. I do call you pumpkin. I call my mom yeah, pumpkin too. You call everybody else pumpkin. Though. Yeah, I do. I know it's not special. I know I'm not special. I know every chick thinks I'm being special when I call <sighs> pumpkin, but it's because I can't remember your names. I know. I was doing a and, podcast. And, and honestly, Gina. even when you try to remember my name, you can't remember my name. Yeah, I was doing a podcast with Anna. It was Gina's show yesterday. I must have called her Gina five times. <laughs> um, so I called Gina Anna. So, but let me address this one thing too, because everybody in the group will write, hey, I've been doing this for insert amount of time, seven days, a month. However long it's usually within a couple of months, I've been doing this and I'm not losing any weight. What do I do? You know, Anna, I talk to people in the consults all the time. Yep. I've been doing it for X amount of time. I haven't lost any weight. Right. I've been doing it. Um, <clears throat> I lost 20 pounds originally. I haven't lost any more weight. And when I go through their diet with them, they see where the pitfalls are. Right. Because Everybody, you know, we all have a different song in our brain. And everybody plays their song. You know, we all make something okay. in the diet, I'm giving up all of this. 
I'm not giving up that. Right? Right. And the words of the great meatloaf, I'll do anything for love, but I won't do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God, Thank I knew what he was talking about. <laughs> um, Listen, uh, thank you, friend, new friend of the show for writing that in. And uh, I, she did write. And I wanted to say this, too. Should I push through? Should I wait until life calms down? Should I push through? Only you can answer that question for yourself. I will say. As you're getting used to eating NSNG and, you know, I'm trying to provide you with tools to help and the groups are there to help and the clubhouse is there to help and the live demo. Oh, Vinny and I, you and I are going to do a live YouTube Q&A. Yeah, we are. When, on when Wednesday. Are we that? Oh, wait, Wednesday? hang on. Oh, I might have I might have screwed up. Anna. Hang on. Hang on. Uh oh, because I wrote your team, but nobody wrote me back. All right, We're doing a live Q&A on YouTube. At what time? 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, what do you want to do? When do you want to do it? Eight o'clock Eastern. Can we do that? Yeah. Eight o'clock Eastern. I'm putting it in a book right now because you, you know, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. You know why I can't do it? One before? hour. You want to know why I can't do it before that? Um, I'm interviewing with my new girlfriend. Oh, right boy. All the while. Oh, then you definitely have a heart out. I'm writing it down right now. Anna. Look at that. All right. So eight o'clock. Eight o'clock Eastern on Wednesday, April 20th. We are going to do a one hour live Q&A on YouTube live. Vinny, your team's going to set it up and we're going to post the link and all the socials and everything. And you're going to tweet about it and I'm going to tweet about it. Okay. Then you're going to go live and then you're going to bring me on and we're going to do a live q and I'll monitor the chat. And I probably will have Megan there too to help monitor because you and I are going to be talking. So in two days, folks, from this podcast. Yeah, we're definitely doing this in two days. Yeah, we're doing this at eight If you're listening to this Eastern. too late. Go back to Vinny's YouTube and watch the Q&A. That's right. Anna and I might be drinking. For, that might be a drinking. <gasps> That's a great idea. Boom. Let's have a live, drink. Anna. The live whiskey scotch Q&A. Yeah. Exactly. Drink scotch, I drink the whiskey. Yeah, I'm, I, I got the scotch just sitting right over there. I have your scotch here, by the way. Still, let's see. Yeah, that's from, my 40, from my 40th birthday party. And you're like almost 50 now, right? I'm turning 49 in a month. I still have your scotch. It's moved house with us. It's now a 30 year old scotch. Yeah. <laughs> At least. Yeah. Yeah. All um, right. We did it. We did a show. All right. So let me, let me cut this off because uh, I don't want to screw Bill over because Bill is super. You go, busy. girl. All right. So, folks, before that, uh, before I cut this off, uh, Anna Vocino has Eat Happy Kitchen. She's got the rubs. They're shipping. They're shipping. You, you, you can order the rubs um, and they, they're going to be shipping. Um, we have faith in that. Also, she's got all of the gravy. She's got the puttanesca. She's do you have the marinara? In marinara is back in stock. It came back in stock. Marinara, today. get on top of it while you can. And she's got the pink crema. You want to get that? That's all. Eat happy sauces. I use this on meat all the time. I did it the other day with Anna. This might not sound good. It might, but it <laughs> I was like good. it when you preface it with Anna. This might not sound good. I did. You know what kind of sausage I put it over? What? I did the, the brat work. Brat, I did brats. I love brats. Okay, I, I cooked. Are the you brats. kidding me? Brats I, with sauce? So good. And I made the brats and I went, you know what? It's not spicy enough for me. It's just not enough spice. Right. So I was like, you know, it was when Serena was out of town. She was in LA for a week. And I was like, this is not good enough. This is not good enough. I have one crema left. <gasps> I had a crema. And uh, what I did was um, I put it, I put it in the pot, I heated it up. I heated up the crema. And then I grated some fresh Parmesan in there, the fresh, mm -hmm. the good stuff. And I, I let that mix in with it. Yeah, I got it nice and gooey. Put it in there. You're gonna hate this, but I added some salt and some black pepper. Fine. Okay. Because I wanted it to be spicy because brats are not like Italian sausage. Right. So I did brats that. Brats are a mild, they have a mild flavor profile. And then here's what I did. I cut the brats like that, like mm -hmm. on an angle. <clears throat> like like, like a a diagonal color. discs. Yeah. 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 And I laid them on out. On the bias. And then I ladled it on top. Just Great. ladled. Now, as it turns out, 
I did the whole thing of sauce. But that didn't take all the sauce, but it was a meal. That was yeah. a meal. I had like three or four brats on there, big giant brats, fresh from the good butcher. And I had that for my meal. And I had about half the sauce left. Next morning, I wake up. It's in the fridge, right? I let it cool yeah. off on the counter. And then mm -hmm. I put it in the fridge. And they had that cheese in there. Yeah. So I, mean, I got to do something so with this. I made myself an omelet, but without the cheese. Like I didn't put cheese in the middle. Right. Yep. Right. You see what I did? Yep. Yep. I made the omelet and I just flipped it over and made it look like an omelet. And I just ladled the rest of that on top. I used about four eggs. Perfect. It was leg day. It was leg day. I, I do a lot yeah, of it was yeah. time. Yeah. So it was leg day. And I, I did four eggs and I ladled that on top. People think you use these gravies just on pasta dishes and Italian. It's you so funny. It. I get confused when people take pick because there's obviously a lot of more people eating the gravies that right. may, might not necessarily know what the work that we're doing here. And I, right, you know, right, right. that's going to happen. And I hope it does because I need to sell sauce. And uh, but it's always funny to me when people send tag me in a story or a picture and they're they're making a pasta with it. And I'm always like, huh, I didn't know you could do that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah look. I'm not used to eating pasta in 10 years. So it's like actually 20 years because of celiac. Yeah, you're ladling on everything else. And, and the bottom line, right, everything is so good. When I'm batching it, it's got to be easy. When I was taking care of Marie and Cy, it, you know, I was cooking for three. I, I, it had to be easy. Yeah. And it's it designed to be, to be easy. Yeah. And By the way, when you get the spicy marinara, when we come out with that, when you get that spicy marinara, that should be about a month. I might have not, to do another mukbang. Mukbang, a spicy yeah. mukbang. I'm going to tell you something. You will yeah. not need to go to the doctor to get rid of Guam. Let me put it to you that way. Well, Guam is going to be gone on the 25th. <gasps> Are we going to have a funeral for Guam? Anna, we might have to do podcast ahead of time or something on the 26th. I, I, we got to look at the schedule. The schedule. Yes. Can we look at the schedule? Yes. Okay, right. I'm losing my All voice right. here. Let's, we're done. We did the show. Uh, by the way, folks, uh, vinnytauteries.com. Before you go, before you go to Amazon, go to vinnytauteries.com. Click through the banner. It puts a little coal on the fire. It gets my train down the track, and I'm able to keep this show free for a gazillion years in a row. We also have a super fan page. You can check that out. It kind of works like PBS. I don't charge for this show. We mentioned Debbie. Um, we're bringing Leona onto the show. She's she's. Um, I just got a text from her. She's going to be the new member here. Um, all of these people, Anna, Gina, Bill, Scott, there are a lot of checks that go out. And there's, there's um, you know, there's, um, what do they call it? Bandwidth. We pay, for, we pay for a lot of stuff around here. And we appreciate when you guys go to vinnychoteries.com and toss us a couple of bucks so I can keep this show free yeah. uh, for a billion years in a row. So we're going to cut this off because they got